Hello everyone, welcome again to uh, Hybrid Financial Consultants, as you see here. Uh, and now we we'll proceed with IFRS 15, Revenue Recognition from Contact with Customers. So this standard is mainly concerned at, uh, on how to recognize revenue. Actually, we saw uh, from the previous two, from the previous three lectures that uh, this is a five-step process involving recognition, identifying the contract, then performance obligations, and then determination of the transaction price, allocating the price and finally recognizing revenue. Actually, we went through step one and step two, and today we're just going to proceed with step three. We started with a bit of step three, and now we're just going here, significant financing components right here. What, what about significant financing component? What do I mean by this? For example, I've sold goods to a customer and the customer is going to pay me uh, in one year's time. The normal double entry is, this is the normal double entry. Let me show you one thing here. It's just it's something very, very obvious. Let me give you an example. Let's say I've made sales to a customer. I've made sales to a customer for, for uh, let's say for 200, dollars 200 million dollars just like this but uh to be received payment to be received in one year so i've sold good but the customer is going to pay me in one year what does this mean i sell today but it takes a lot of time to receive that amount of money now what would be the normal double entry the normal double entry is always like this i, I always debit trade receivables I expect to receive this amount from the customer of 200 and then i usually credit sales just like this sales of how much i usually credit sales of 200 now as far as financing component is concerned we say that this 200 year has got some issue it has to be split it has to be split between the normal trade receivables and let's say a financing component financing component if it's a financing component, that means uh, you could say that you can split it into the finance income. This is a very, very basic example. So you have to break it down. Now, since you're not giving the discount rate, let's presume that maybe I could have the trade receivable of 160. This is just an example, but also uh, I could debit here by the finance income. I could debit by the finance income the here, finance income of let's say uh, the remaining figure that would be uh, 40, just like this. So this is what about the financing component. So you sell to the customer, you give him time to pay you uh, in, 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 in a lot of time further, it's a significant financing component, you have financed the customer. So you expect, actually you could say financing in or, or finance income receivable, finance income receivable, because it's an amount to be received, receivable. You could just write, write it this way. I hope you know, you see and you know what I'm just trying to speak out, what I'm just trying to deliver to you. But also it could happen that maybe uh, the customer pays you in advance. You receive the money in advance, and then you deliver goods in one year's time. That means it is the customer who would have financed you. So this would be uh, the finance income, act for actually the finance cost payable, not the finance cost receivable. So the situation really depends. It depends whether you are the one who has financed the customer or it is the customer who has financed you. If you finance the customer, you get finance income receivable. If the customer finances you, then you, you, you incur actually, actually would have the finance cost payable, just like that. So you have to be careful on what I'm just trying to speak about. So here we are told, in determining the transaction price, an entity must consider if the timing, this is the point here, the timing of payments provide the customer or entity with the financing benefits. So if the benefit of the financing is to the actor, to the entity, that means that the customer has financed, the entity has been financed. And so it will be the some amount payable. If the financing benefit is to the customer, that means the entity will be entitled to receive something. So it will be the financing income receivable, just like that. And then we are told here, the following are indications of a significant financing component. The following are indications of a significant financing component. This is, these are just examples. So you could see them, and then we should go directly to an example. So here we are told, difference between the amount promised or promised consideration and the cash settling price of the promised goods or services. So this is just an example here. Promise consideration, an amount the customer promised to pay, and the cash settling price. 
settle cash settling price, the amount that you are actually paid for the, for the goods or services. So if they differ, it me it reflects actually uh if they differ, it actually reflects uh a significant financing component. But another example is here, and I just illustrated this above, length of time between the transfer of the promised goods or services to the customer and the payment date. We compare these two things. We compare the transfer, the date of transfer and the payment date. If you transfer today, but you are paid one year later, that means you have financed the customer. But if you receive payment today, but you transfer one year later, that means you have been financed. So you have to be careful uh, on these matters. So far, we are told, if there is a financing component, then consideration receivable needs to be discounted to present value using the rate at which the customer borrows money. So if there is a financing component, let's say you have financed the customer, that means the customer has borrowed. So you have to ask yourself, at what, at what rate are that the customer usually borrow? And then use that as a discount rate and uh, you discount your values. I hope you remember actually, if, or if you, have, if you have never met this, the concept of time value of money, how to get the present value. Present value is obtained this way. You just take future value, future value, and then you divide it. You just take future value and then we divide it by one plus R, and then you raise it to the power of N. So this is what we usually do. So actually just go to an example and figure out uh, how to go about it all. So let's just go directly to an example and see what uh, goes on. Let's go to an example, uh, example number three. Then we have example number, we did all this in previous videos. And then uh, here we are financing components. So we just go and take a look at this example number six. It's a nice, nice example. So stay tuned. And here we are, we are told that Jelwa enters into a contract with a customer to sell equipment on the 1st December 2021. This is the contract entered into. Then control of the equipment transfers to the customer on that date. That means if control is transferred on that date, you consider that you have sold, you have satisfied the performance obligation, and so you are entitled to recognize revenue. So it further states that the price stated in the contract is $2 million and is due on 31st December 2063. Now take a look at this. You have satisfied the performance obligation and delivered on 31st December 2061, but actually you would receive the amount uh, two years later on 31st December 2063. So you, you deliver goods to the customer, but actually payment by the customer, it, it stays pending for two more years. That means you have financed the customer. You have given good to the customer, but the customer will pay you later, significantly later. That's why by saying significant financing component, significant financing component, that means uh, actually it creates a huge difference, a time difference. You know, if you have sold good to a customer and maybe the customer will pay you in two years, two, two months, two weeks time, we usually ignore uh, the concept of like significant financing component, but here it makes more sense. And here we're told that market rates of interest available to this particular customer are 10%. So we have financed the customer and market interest rates are 10%. Now required, what are we required to do from this question? We are told here that explain how this transaction should be accounted for in the financial statements of Njelwa for the year ending 31st December 2021. So what should I do? Actually, I've sold good to a customer, I've delivered, I've, I've, de I've satisfied the performance obligation, then I'm entitled to recognize revenue because we recognize revenue when, when or as we satisfy performance obligation. I satisfy the performance obligation and transfer the control to the customer and actually I have recognized revenue. Now what? Should I recognize all this amount uh, at the end? Or should I recognize all the amount that is entitled in the question? Or should I wait? Should I recognize which amount? That's what we're just going to take a look at. We're just going to ask ourselves about that. So, Let's go to the question. Actually, the question did not, yeah, this one. The price is 2 million. I'm not going to recognize all 2 million because this 2 million includes the significant financing component. So the double entry to debit receivable, the normal double entry, if not significant financing component, is debit receivable credit sales. But this, this time around, actually, in that trade receivable, I'll have to break it down. 
Okay, let's go to the solution here. So what should we do on this? We are saying that there is a length of time between transfer of control that is on 31st December 2021 and the payment date that is 31st December 2023, two years have passed. And so the contract includes a significant financing component. So this was just what I tried to talk about. So what to do? You have to discount uh, your consideration in the contract. So we say the consideration must be adjusted for the impact of the financing transaction. So simply speaking, you do not have to waste time a lot. Uh, and we also know that revenue should be recognized when the performance obligation is satisfied. We know that the performance obligation has been satisfied as of 31st December 2021. Why? Because the, the all, all of the transfer was, was all the controls transferred. So first of all, let's just go and discount this amount. So as such, we are told here, revenue as well as receivable should be recognized at which amount. You take 2 million here, and then we discount it by one, by the discount rate of 10%. So we discount it by one plus R, which is 0 0.1, then we'll have 2 million over 1.1 squared, ending up with this figure here. And so this figure should appear in both spread receivables as well as, uh, should depend both receivables as well as in sales. So uh, this is what I will have to do. So debit trade receivables by this amount and then credit sales by this amount. And what are the significant financing component? After that, I would have to apply the concept of financial instruments. So we say the receivable is subsequently accounted for in accordance with IFRS 9 financial instruments, which are in normal circumstances which in normal circumstances would just require us to do something like this. Actually, I would have had to uh, do this. Let's say, uh, you know, this is the end of, this This is the end of what? This is, oh, sorry. Sorry, let me make, make this, let's do this. Yeah, I think you can proceed. You know, the revenue I have just shown above here is just recognized for, the revenue just showed above is just going to be recognized for what? It is just for 31st December 20x1. This is what we should, we are, we are just going to recognize this one, 1 million, 652,892. Now, one year later, that is on 31st, for the year ending 31st December, 20x2, this is what uh, I should have done. First of all, I would have to compute the finance income. It follows, I would take my 10% or 0 0.1, and then I would multiply by this figure here, 1652, and then 892, ending up with, uh, ending up with 165, 289. So this would be the finance income, the double entry of which would be as follows. I could just write here, I could just debit, instead of debiting trade receivables, I could say debit finance income receivable, finance income receivable, finance income receivable of how much? Of 165 and then 289. And then I would have uh, to credit uh, the remaining amount, which, which would be finance income now. Do not go and record sales. This will just be finance income, which would be 165 and then 289, just like this. So this would be in addition to recording this figure here, uh, which we said is how much? We said is at the first December 20x1, I should have debited trade receivables, or could, I could just say receivable, receivables of receivables of this figure. But also, I could have credited sales, sales of this amount here. This would be the sales. So this is what uh, I should have done. Uh, so uh, this is all about significant financing component. Actually, there are several examples, but for now, uh, this is all. Thank you very much, and stay tuned for uh, further examples on on how to determine transaction price.